Thanks for braving the elements and coming out tonight. We've been warned on this entire run about how freezing it is in Alamosa. Some people told us not to come. They're like, you can get there, but you won't get out. What a beautiful room. Would you agree? That's right, we used it that way too. There's a fire in my head tonight. There's a fire in my head. Walk across the valley You went looking for something Finding it could be Yeah, when you went away Everything changed Now I'm out here in the fields Praying for rain I went up to the rooftop I went down to the alley I went looking for something To find who I could be Yeah, once I looked I couldn't look away Now I'm out here in the fields Praying for rain Cause they There's a fire in my head So an interesting thing happened just yesterday. 
which is <laughs> that uh, a woman in Colorado Springs. Now, I, before I continue with this story, I, I want you to be sure that you don't feel any pressure to act accordingly. Uh, I'm not judging Alamosa based on what happened in Colorado Springs. I don't expect this to happen tonight, but um, in Colorado Springs yesterday, a, a woman after the show gave me this guitar. Wow. It's not normal for that to happen. <laughs> but um, but it's, um, it's a, a really beautiful uh, old Gibson 12 string, and it, uh, it matches uh, that guitar, which I which I played, and I think that she felt like it deserved to be reunited with its family, um, and they've been getting along really well. This guy doesn't even have a case, so we just threw it into the car. Um, but it seemed like I should play it for you because it's here, right? Uh, and I was, uh, so the first song we just did is called The Fire In My Head. It's uh, the title track on a record called The Fire In My Head. That's what it means to be a title track. Uh, and we're going to do another one from the record. It turns out the record is 10 years old this year. I didn't know that until someone told me that. Um, and that's uh, crazy because it's, uh, it's like my fifth record, which means that, you know, it's amazing given how young I am, you know. <laughs> Last night I was saying that I'm in my late 20s to everyone and um, no one laughed. Uh, anyway, this, when I moved to Santa Fe, which was, which was uh, about tw 12 years, 11 or 12 years ago, um, I wrote a bunch of songs and recorded that record in, in Santa Fe. And so there's a lot of songs talking about the weather and the lack of rain. Um, and in fact, you can kind of figure out where I was living because I've lived in a lot of places based on just the like average precipitation, annual precipitation in the song. Uh, if, if, it's, if it's asking for rain, I wrote it in the desert. If it's, if it's raining a lot, I was in New York or Georgia. So this is a, also from, from The Fire in My Head. And I'd like to invite you to, to, to sing along. There, I don't really do a lot of sing-alongs, so if you came to participate a lot tonight, you're gonna have to participate in other ways than singing. But, <laughs> but there may be like a few songs I ask you and invite you to sing to. And, and if, I mean, you're welcome to sing to anything, but I'm only gonna officially invite you to, on a few numbers, and this is one of them. And this, I think this is, this is the easiest in a way, and it's the hardest in another way. The, it's easiest because we're just humming it, which means that you don't have to worry about lyrics, and if you hum with your lips closed, as most people do, no one can tell if you're singing or not. So that's cool, because, you know, um, and like, remember the days with the masks, that was also an interesting thing for sing-alongs, because no one could tell. Um, gave people a lot of freedom to express themselves and not be known, or to stay shy and not get blamed for not participating. So your part is going to go like this. I'm just going to sing it. We're going to start the song, and you can catch on as we go. It'll, um, I'll do it in the beginning. We'll do it once or twice more in the song, and then that will be the end of the song, and we'll move on to another piece. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? Or are we good? <laughs> mm.
trying to hold on to something that lasts, something with roots or tied to some past. Cause we will all wake up our face to the glass and wonder how it went by so fast. All of the questions were too old to ask. What will we learn? Humming is a good uh, good thing to do on a cold night. It warms up the body. <laughs> bought this guitar. Bought this guitar secondhand um, while living in Madrid in Spain. Uh, my family was there uh, in the year leading up to the pandemic. I, uh, I speak some Spanish, but not really enough uh, to have purchased a used guitar from a guy who didn't speak any English. And it was an interesting negotiation because when he came down the stairs, he was both blind and the guitar had no strings on it. And I didn't know how to communicate properly to ask for if we could string it, if I could string it. I didn't, I didn't know how to. So I bought it on faith. And, um, and when, um, when, when COVID swept through the city, uh, we, I have two boys and, and we were living in a really dense part of Madrid and we only had a little terrace to go outside on. Um, and, and the city shut down pretty quickly. And we decided at the very last minute that we were going to leave. We were supposed to be there for a few months more than we had, than, than we were there. Um, and we got out on one of the last commercial flights out. Um, and I remember calling Delta when my wife and I were still trying to figure out what we should do, whether we should stay or whether we should go. And we had just bought all this toilet paper and toilet and pa paper towels, and we were well stocked. And and um, and you know, in some ways, leaving, coming back to America was was the safe move. But we had tenants living in our house, so we couldn't go back to our house. And and in other ways, so so in other ways, it was a real risky move because we didn't want to get on a plane, and we didn't have any, and we had all these supplies. You know, we were good for at least a month. Um, but we decided to leave. Uh, helped by the Delta woman I was on the phone with because I was talking to her and, and, I, and I had to explain to her our whole situation. I was like, well, listen, we're supposed to be here for a year. Things are getting great here, you know, and we've met all these people. And she's like, honey, I don't know you. I, I don't know how to give you advice. Do you want to go talk to your wife about this? And, she, and I was like, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to lose. I, I waited on hold for like 45 minutes to get her. She's like, I'll wait, you know, and so I, I was like, really? So I put the phone down. I went to the other room. I talked to my wife and came back and, and she was the second person who knew we were leaving Spain then. And on the last, it, it, you know, so we grabbed all our stuff. We didn't, we left a lot of things in the apartment. We didn't, we couldn't bring everything home. And, and I, I had, I had that guitar with me and I had bought this one, but this hadn't really done much for me yet. But at the last minute, I just, I grabbed that guitar and, and we left. And, um, and we, 
ended up in this house in Newport, Rhode Island, and, um, and it turned out that in the attic of that house, I wrote all the songs on the, on the record that became a record called Oh Quiet World on this guitar. And, and the first song is this song we're going to play for you now, which the song is a lot shorter than what I've just described. Um, <laughs> it's interesting how that works. <laughs> um, and it's called Gonna Win the War, and, and it, it was like an attempt at trying to be optimistic at a time when optimism was hard to come by. I mean, eventually things got, for us, it was sort of nice during the pandemic. It was, um, yeah, it was quiet and still. And, but in the beginning, it was pretty scary. And, and, uh, and this was a song to try to comfort my kids and to try to comfort my parents and to try to comfort myself. And it's called Gonna Win the War. Gonna win the war gonna hold it down We're coming back for sure Gonna win the war It's just a waiting game It is not the end No one is to blame It's just a waiting game Oh, child will be fine New song, play a new song for you now. That um, was inspired by a um, by an ongoing uh, marital conflict. <laughs> which has to do with an old pickup truck that I bought my wife, but now want back. Mm -hmm. 
added to the problem is that we have a son who turns 17 tomorrow, and he wants the truck too. So we've got like a kind of a Greek drama on our hands. And, um, and I've, I'm throwing this song into the mix to hope that uh, with, with a love song, I might be able to at least push my wife out of the picture, give her the song, and then it's just about me and the son trying to figure out who gets the truck. It's called The Right and Wrong, but um, we write it down on the set list just as truck. And the truck in question is a 94 Toyota pickup. It's a stick shift and it's beautiful. But so is my wife. And my son's attractive too. <laughs> and he's strong. He's about my height now. And to be honest, I don't know if I can take him anymore. It, I mean in a physical sense. I love him, but uh, I don't know who would win if, we, if it went to that. On the eve of leaving, of letting go, you were out there waiting for me after the show in your pickup truck with that black dress on I knew then and there I was wrong I'll never get you out of my mind time so I gave up trying yeah I quit the fight I knew then and there you were right sing hallelujah for me and you for what stays the same after the picture It's an old love song Either right and wrong So we jump back in And we headed west Slept in the desert But didn't get no rest You talk to me of angels By the firelight Nothing could be wrong it feels so right and we found an old place outside Santa Fe yeah we had a baby another on the way we didn't think that our love could ever be that strong well we found out we were wrong Love 
was bigger than right and wrong. Thank you. That same wife of mine um, has this terrible habit of, uh, of sing when she sings to the kids at night before they go to bed, and she doesn't actually sing to the older one anymore because he's 17. That would maybe be weird. It's like breastfeeding until they're eight. <laughs> <laughs> Which she didn't do. I'm not saying she did. I'm just saying it's an analogy. <laughs> you know we're streaming. I do know we're streaming. We're, we're also okay. online if people yeah. are... There was a guy I went to college with who was breastfed until he was like six, and he used to tell us that apparently, like, he remembers, <laughs> he remembers it, you know? He, like, would walk over and just stand up and... <laughs> I hope he's watching. <laughs> anyway, uh, my wife uh, has this, had this habit of, of, like, when she would sing to the kids, she would um, change the words to the songs whenever there was a, 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 a lyric that was sad, you know? Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of a good example. Like sitting on the dock of the bay, you know, she would, she would make it seem like when you're sitting on the dock of the bay, like everything good is coming my way. And, and just, you know, it's like everything, just, you know, a couple words here and there, but it, but it makes a big difference in the meaning. And it makes the kids think that like nothing bad happens in the world. And, and so they sleep soundly. But I'm a mess in the other room because one, I think it's important to teach your kids that bad things happen. Good guys don't always win. And two, I'm a lyricist. I spent all my damn time trying to write words. And you know, like, if it, if it's not, if it's not, if the trade isn't respected within the confines of the of the home, you know, then. Uh, anyway, so you'll you'll hear a reference to that in the second verse of this song. But the song is really, it's called Wolves in the Wings, and it's, um, it's, a, it's a song about, about the, how hard it is to know um, another person's pain and suffering. And that we all are dealing at some level with wolves. I say that and I recognize that there's, you know, it's a stereotype that the wolf is the bad guy. And we're trying to get over that these days, I know. <laughs> but again, just like the breastfeeding thing, it's just a metaphor. <laughs> in the wings. 
Do you feel ready to sing another one? <laughs> Not sure what that uh, response was, <laughs> but we're going to do it. Do you want words or hum it? This one's going to be words. This one's going to be words. Thanks for asking, but, um, but you're welcome to hum it too if you feel that's more in your wheelhouse. <laughs> I mean, you did do that part well, so I, it's, you know, maybe it's early to move on, but um, this is an easy lyric, and it's a short one, and, and um, so. Um, it's, it's getting on to the time in, where it's hard to remember a time when things were just going well in the world, you know? At least that's the way I feel. And this is a song um, that's, that's uh, called Shelter, and it's, and it's a song about, about, like, you know, pledging that you're going to be there for the person you love um, and the person who needs you or the people you love and the people who need you, which feels like um, is more and more important. Well, it was always important. Anyway, your part uh, is going to go like this. All that we've been through. And I sing something. And then we do it again. All that we've been through. Yeah, I mean, that was gorgeous, everyone. And if you feel like it, if anybody really, you know, I know there's a couple singers at least here who could go, All that we've been through. Which would be really nice. Thanks. 
That was great. That was really good. The humming was below your skill set, it turned out. That was really, you really hit. I'll do another one from uh, the record, Oh Quiet World, the, the pandemic record. This is, uh, this is a song called Beside the Shuttered Doors. Has anybody been to Madrid? Well, it's an it's an amazing city, and, and and the heart of the city is the is the street life. I mean, I I don't know that. I mean, I haven't been to Asia, but um, but in my travels, that's like the most vibrant and densely populated street life. You could, you know, you could just get sort of carried along in the avenues. And when the city when the city shut down, it just emptied out immediately, and we could just walk down the center of you know Gran Via. was this eerie beauty about the whole place. But um, this song is, and a lot of the record really is, is about trying to make sense of, of, of our lives when a lot of the things that we leaned on and counted on and defined ourselves by got stripped away. And, 
and thinking about whether it made sense to rush back to assemble it all again the way we had it before, or whether we could look at that time and think about whether there was some of that stuff we didn't need at all in the first place. So this is sort of a prayer to be like washed clean of all of that stuff that we didn't actually need and to be able to come out the other side healthy and intact and able to focus on what actually matters. The city is silent like a ghost on the cobblestones Even the church bells do not ring The winds they are blowing off the coast down the alleyways Sweeping beside the shuttered doors Oh, quiet world, maybe now we'll know all we really need I need to know you're fine Cause I couldn't see
I'm, I'm in a whoa. I'm in a duo project called the Sons of Town Hall that um, I really would like to bring back to this this hall. Um, and so I thought we'd do one of our songs as a little teaser. Uh, in, in this project, um, we dress in uh, shabby, threadbare Victorian outfits. I wear a top hat and a tailcoat, and I go by Josiah. And um, my partner, who's from London, England, uh, wears a bowler and like a, you know, his coat is all in tatters, and he goes by George, even though his name is Ben. And we um, have a, we've created a world that we inhabit because I got bored just doing this and living in this world. And in this other world, uh, we built a boat out of scrap and have sailed it across the Atlantic, and then we roam the land looking for work and running from the law. I wouldn't, we wouldn't tell you this on stage, you would just be seeing it happen. Not necessarily running from the law, but we, we don't, I don't reveal any of it, you know? And it's delivered like it's true, deadpan. In fact, I forgot we were streaming. I shouldn't be saying this. <laughs> My partner's going to kill me. But in this world, we've both fallen for, like we often do, the same woman. And her name was Louise, and she was gorgeous. Raven hair and big brown eyes and a rose tattoo on her inner thigh. You know her? <laughs> We had a hard time because we didn't realize we both had were in love with her until after we had set sail together. So we realized that you know a couple weeks into the journey, and it's difficult because we by that point we rely on each other for everything. But here we are now, enemies, mortal enemies. And so we heal by singing this song night after night to each other. And I've now taken to singing it in my solo shows or in this configuration just so that I can maybe get a leg up in winning her back because I don't think he's playing this song alone. <laughs> In the early hours of morning, way before the dawn, I creak across the floorboards, I pull my sweater on. Then my boots get dark with dewdrops, and I walk across the fence line. Louise, I'm looking for a sign. Louise, I don't know if you're still mine. Yeah, it's been a lonely winter, snow up to the roof line. I've been writing. If only in my mind To say that I am sorry It's been like one long night Louise, you always made it bright Louise, let me try to make it right Louise, I'm knocking at your door I wanna hold you like before Louise, I know that there is more. I've been batting down the hatches. I've been harrowing the land. You know I haven't touched the bottle or raised an angry hand. I've been trying to read the Bible, but I don't know all the words, Louise, I wonder if you heard, Louise, I hope you're still my girl, Louise, I'm knocking at your door, I wanna hold you like before. goes down they say but it was me I looked away 
Louise, take me back, I swear I'll stay. Louise, I'm knocking at your door, I wanna hold you like before. Louise, I know that there is more. Louise, I know that there is more. Thank you. That's the Sons of Town Hall you can find us on, on the, on the line. We also have a record of ours up there with that song on it. Sarah Watkins plays fiddle on that one. She plays the part of Louise. Speaking of, we have, we have a display out there and um, an interesting thing is, is possible tonight. Um, a lot of times I bring either way too much or way too little merchandise on a tour. We've just done this little run of three shows up in Colorado. It's been really nice. This is Susan Holmes, by the way, and that's why it's been nice. <laughs> but what I'm, what I'm getting at is that we, I may have brought the exact correct number of items, uh, and that, that only requires each of you to go home with six things each. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. Like, I think if a few of you buy things, we're going to be good. And uh, so just to let you know what's up there, there's uh, three different albums on vinyl um, and then a number of things on CD. And then I've got a book uh, that pairs with, with a record. Uh, it's uh, 10 short stories and each story, the main character of each story has a song on the record, Cardboard Boat. And we're going to play you that, uh, that title track right now, Cardboard Boat. And so if you're wondering at the end of it what it's about, and you're like, God, I wish there was a short story that went with it. <laughs> and then in addition to the stuff we mentioned, or I mentioned, because you didn't say a word, <laughs> Susan has a, a beautiful CD as well up there. And then uh, we also have a few t-shirts, very odd sizes, mostly in sizes you don't think humans are that small, um, but, but they're, they're up there. That's going to be harder to sell out of. I, I won't be upset if I go home with all those shirts because um, unless you like, would like to put you know, a shirt on your, I don't know, your lamp post, say, I think it, it, that would look good. You know, or a, and, then, and then tonight we also have uh, a poster that I had forgotten I'd even printed. Um, bless you. Uh, I printed these posters, I don't know, 10 years ago, and they're in this really beautiful thick stock, which is great if you're, you know, if you happen to be in the room where they're for sale, but it's impossible to travel with them for me. I can't, you can't roll them, so I can't ever bring them on a plane. And, uh, and so they've basically stayed in my garage for 10 years, but I have them tonight. And you'll notice there's no price on the price list for the posters because I will accept anything. I mean, anything. You give me like a nickel, I'll take it. <laughs> Um, so this is Cardboard Boat, which feels like it needs a little bit of a better setup than I just did because I didn't, <laughs> but we're going to just go with it. We'll be fine. Thank you, Susan. Susan said we'll be fine. <laughs> Sometimes you get a side person to be your therapist as well as your... <laughs> I'm on a cardboard boat. I don't, didn't like that I just called you my side person. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm proud to be your I'm side I'm sorry person. about that. No. My bandmate. Even I did my friend. I, did I know. Yeah. If you notice the sign out on the road, Susan Holmes was up top I on the billing. The top so it's, billing. it's incorrect for me to call her my side person. So thanks for coming to see me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I will say before we begin, because I sort of started and then I stopped, uh, is that this song is, um, is, a, is about someone who has lost their lifetime companion and is still, um, is still talking to him. Because that's what one does, I think.
I'm on a cardboard boat And the water is high Cause when you're on your own It's like there's nowhere to hide Like I lost everything I know I'm older now Feels like the tide's rushing in Been looking back again
together to this. Okay. Um, so we're just going to do a few more for you, and uh, and then and then we're going to um, say good night. Which is uh, which is which is hard because it's been a really nice trip, and this is a this is a really beautiful place you live. Yeah. Um, so thank you. And I would I would like you to um, to join us on, on this one too. Um, you know, let's let's not do this now. You're not going to join us on this one. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, you can join us on this one. There's a there's like a ba 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 part on this one that is a maybe you could try and sing that if you'd like. There's a there's a there's a rule where if you sing enough a high, a high enough percentage of a show you actually get your money back because you're like we did it we did we worked too you know <laughs> I have a theory of gas tank management that most people who drive with me don't appreciate. <laughs> I basically think that you should try to push a tank to its ultimate potential, meaning that if you don't coast into the gas station on empty, you've wasted, you've wasted fuel in some weird logic. And I, I can tell by the response that some of you know people like this, and you probably don't like that either. My first ex-husband. <laughs> Susan's first ex-husband, for example, which is part of the reason that he's no longer married to her. And I've run out of gas at least four times, including once recently in the truck, actually. Um, so I haven't learned my lesson. I still kind of like to tempt fate. And um, this song came out of a, a moment, uh, the lowest moment of all, the first time I ran out of gas when... Um, and it's an interesting feeling. I mean, when you really you push that gas pedal down and nothing happens, you know, and especially if you're on a highway, that doesn't feel good. Like I'm on the left, in the left lane going 80 and suddenly I'm, I've got nothing and trucks are going by. And, and I don't know if I mentioned this, but in the shotgun seat is my wife and she's pregnant. So that wasn't good for anyone. And at that point, we had only been married a couple of years, and although she was pregnant with my child, it still there still was a chance she could decide, like, maybe this guy isn't the one to raise our child, you know, given his theory of gas tank management. Your heart is like a parachute. It only opens when you fall. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh. 
heart is like a parachute It keeps us both from falling down Yeah, your heart is like a parachute It keeps us both from falling now Yeah, your heart is like a parachute It keeps us both from falling down ba 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 Now we're going to do one that you're going to hopefully sing to again. Uh, and this is a song, uh, it's the final song on our record, The Faded Red and Blue, and it's a, a song called This Be Dear to Me. Okay. We're actually gonna, so we're going to end with, with two prayer songs, this one and then, and then another one that is not mine. Um, so this is a uh, this is a, a, a list basically of things that I think are important and worth fighting for. And at the end of each verse, I say, "This be dear to me." I sing, "This be dear to me." And so, if you're comfortable, which I know you are at this point, I invite you to sing, "This be dear to me" as well. Occasionally, there's people in the audience who like. If they're paying close attention, they might not agree with one of the things I say, in which case, you're welcome to not sing, sing this be dear to me. <laughs> but just recognize, if you don't sing, then I'm going to assume that's the reason. And then I'm going to be thinking in my mind, which of those things did they not think was worth fighting for? And then I might forget the chords and have to start over again.
Thanks so much, Society Hall. Thanks uh, in absentia to Don, Donald Richmond, for inviting us here. Um, really appreciate it. Really appreciate you. And we're gonna. Um, well, I don't know what else. We're not. Uh, we're not back in Colorado any time that I know of. But hopefully that'll change. We're in Santa Fe some, but you know that's a drive. But you can find out davidberkeley.com or David Berkeley Music on Instagram or Facebook. And we're going to end with a, a song called Ode Yavo, uh, which, is a, which is a song uh, both in Hebrew and in Arabic. And it's a prayer for peace. And, um, yeah. and it's... Um, it's kind of a chant, it's kind of like a mantra, and I assume that people here aren't fluent in either or both Hebrew and Arabic, um, but neither are we, nope. and, uh, and we're singing it. So if you, uh, if you wanna just sort of make noise to emote, <laughs> you can do that, or you can try and catch on to the words, because they just repeat it themselves as we go. Um, and, uh, and yeah, thanks, thanks again for being here, and, and I, um, I hope to see you all again. Odiavo shalom aleinu, Odiavo shalom aleinu, Odiavo shalom aleinu, Veal kulam. Odiavo shalom aleinu, Odiavo shalom aleinu, Odiavo shalom aleinu, Veal kulam. Salam, salam, aleinu veal kol aolam. Salam, salam. Thanks so much, that's Susan Holmes.